Hi hey guys, welcome to this technical analysis course where I'm going to share you 5 technical analysis skills you must learn before you start and if you're a beginner then this is the course for you so the first skill you need to learn is you gotta learn how to spot the trend now in the first market and also in the stock market there are 3 types of trends you can say that the first one is an uptrend just like this visually you can spot it and the second one is a downtrend visually you can see that when the price makes higher lows higher lows like this and at the same time higher highs like that then you can say that this is an uptrend at the same time when price makes lower highs and also lower lows right then you can say that it's a downtrend another type of trend is called sideways trend or some, or some people might call it a ranging market does trend trading give you a higher probability or does range trading give you a higher probability of making money in the long term i would say for beginners and also for experienced traders it's better for you to trade along with the trend in a ranging market what happens is that there's a lot of volatility there's a lot of whip sauce and it's very easy for you to get stopped out and in a ranging market that goes sideways okay it just tends to give you a lot of false breakouts a lot of false signals so i would prefer that if you trade the trend as compared to the range but with that said if you are one of those minority of range traders then feel free to trade the range okay so the benefits of spotting the trend it increased the probability of you spotting a winning trade okay because there's this theory that says when there's a trend the price is going to move in that direction but bear in mind that a trend doesn't move up in a straight line it goes up and then it retraces goes up retraces goes up retraces but in the long term you're trading the bullish trend you know what i'm saying so if you learn the spot trend this is good if you're a trend follower you learn how to identify okay this is the start of the trend this is the mid of the trend and also when is the trend ending when you study the inside out of a trend you know when is the early stage when is the mid stage and also when is the end of the whole entire stage now understand that different stages of the trend the start of the trend the mid of the trend and also the end of the trend requires different indicators requires different strategies for you to spot for example if you want to spot trend reversals then you use a strategy for example a breakout below the trend line or you can use a strategy that involves divergence which i'm going to share with you later on and basically if you're a trend trader you're gonna learn how to use the trend indicators so that you can use them to determine okay am i trading the bullish trend or am i trading the bearish trend or is this a sideways market use your trend indicators so example of trend indicators a very popular one is trend lines the drawing of the trend line is more of an art than a science because when you draw a trend line it might be different from the way i draw it because it's kind of subjective so the main thing you need to know is you gotta learn how to draw a proper trend line that is not way too far off as compared to how most people would draw their trend line you know what i'm saying for an uptrend you draw the trend line below the price okay now a lot of people ask here how come in an uptrend you cannot draw a trend line just like that so that you can trade the breakup to the upside now here's the thing when you trade the breakup to the upside just like that very often times it's a little bit more risky why is that because when this breakup occurs particularly at the end of the trend this probably tells you that okay the market has exhausted the bullish trend is going to end and normally a breakout based on experience it doesn't last very long so if you have to compare okay should i trade breakout on the upside or should i trade the retracement to the downside and then you enter here i would prefer the retracement trade because you're entering at a better price you get a good risk reward ratio and you're trading the bounce off from the trend line rather than a breakout so personally i would trade the retracement down to the support retracement down to the support please don't mind the writing as compared to a breakout to the upside this is just based on my own opinion so this for the uptrend then for the downtrend okay 
For a downtrend, you draw the trend line above the price and you draw it at the lower highs, you see? One, two, and three. And probably you can enter on the third touch over here. Again, you see if you draw a trend line on the downside, okay? Maybe it'll look something like this. Okay, it's not perfect, but along the way you see breakouts, okay? But it doesn't really last long, you know what I'm saying? You can draw the bottom trend line to exit. Bottom trend line is a take profit target. So some of the tips for you if you are a trend line trader. This is very important, okay? You gotta learn to spot strong and weak trend lines because doesn't mean that if the price tests the trend line, then you gotta go in. Doesn't mean that if the price approaches trend line, then you need to do this or that. Because context is very important. Is the price testing a strong trend line or is it testing a weak trend line or is it testing a mediocre trend line? You gotta understand that, okay? There are many factors that makes a strong trend line, but what makes a strong trend line, just to give you a couple of pointers, the first one, angles cannot be too steep, okay, cannot be too steep. When you have a trend line that is as straight as a pole, going up just like that, it is not a strong trend line. And also a strong trend line is formed when it takes a long time for it to form. When you look at a trend line, on a D1 time frame and H1 time frame, provided both are the same length, which one do you think is stronger? The trend line that you see on the daily time frame is stronger. And also if the price tests the trend line at least three times, in fact the more times it tests the better, but with that said, if it tested way too many times, like for example 10-15 times, it probably tells you that the bullish trend is going to end. When it comes to trend line, you gotta learn how to draw it, because like I said, it's more of an art than a science. And it is a skill that takes time, so if in the first week you cannot draw a trend line properly, then you gotta practice more. The best way to learn it is through drawing it using your hands rather than reading a book about trend lines. Going back to the example just now, okay? I zoom out a little bit and you can see that in a major trend line, okay, let's call this a major trend line. In a major trend line, some people call it a stronger trend line as well. You can also draw minor trend lines. For example, trend lines that last only a while. It's a minor trend line, okay? Trend lines that last only for a while, okay? So this is an Audi chart. And you realize that this trend line is very steep, okay? This trend line, minor trend line is very steep. This one is also very steep. And also this one is very steep. And also you realize that these three minor trend lines that I draw, it is not only very steep, but also when the price breaks above the trend line. Okay, when it breaks above. The upside movement doesn't really last long. You see price broke here again. The, and it break one more time on the third trend line over here. The upside movement doesn't really last long. In fact, it went down afterwards. Compare that with a major trend line. You see price broke this major trend line at this point in time. And you have a major bullish trend after that. One important rule for you is try to avoid drawing minor trend lines. Because I find that it is quite redundant and also I find that it's gonna clutter your chart. It's more about quality trend lines than quantity amount of trend lines. And of course, with trend lines alone, you can spot a reversal, but of course, it's better if you put in more indicators and confirmations, which I'm going to share with you. Okay, so the second trend indicator that you can use is moving average. Now, a very popular moving average that people use, this 100 SMA, and I find that 100 SMA the price tend to come down and test this level quite often. Of course, in this case, it tested only two times. When the price is above 100 SMA, then you can say that it is a bullish trend. When the price goes below 100 SMA, you can say that it is a bearish trend. So basically the moving average, it helps you determine the trend, but it also helps you to spot areas of entry. A couple of tips for you if you use moving average. Again, just like trend lines, you gotta learn how to spot weak or significant moving average. Because there are certain moving averages, they are strong, certain moving average, they are not so strong, they are really weak, so you gotta learn how to filter out what's good and what's not so good, okay? So what makes a really strong moving average? The first criteria is, again, price has to test several times, at least three times. How do you know whether the bullish trend is strong? If the moving average is sloping upwards, if it is going up like that, okay? Not too steep, not too steep. Then it is a strong bullish trend. If the moving average is sloping downwards like that, high chance in a bearish trend. So when the moving average is sloping sideways, going sideways like this, 
you can say that the trend is not as strong or the trend is going to change from a bearish trend to an upwards trend or from a bullish trend to a bearish trend and a lot of traders they like to you know go around and find you know what's the magic moving average number when there's no really magic number you just gotta determine okay what kind of moving average is suitable for which time frame because if you are using smaller time frames the smaller moving average would be more useful for you if you are using the larger time frames then the larger moving average values would be more suitable for you so it's not about caring what moving average number is the best because it depends on what type of trader you are now basically there are two main ways that you can use moving average and the first one is you can use the crossover strategy and you can use it to enter when the price comes down or goes up and test the moving average so let's say you have a moving average that slopes upwards okay you want the price to come down test moving average then potentially you can enter right here and for downwards trend line you want the price to go up and test the moving average okay and when it goes up one more time you might potentially want to enter here and one very important thing, don't use moving average in isolation because if you use moving average for entry signals it's going to be a bit risky because moving average is a lagging indicator so if you're entering just using a lagging indicator it's not gonna work out so well now when it comes to crossovers okay crossovers you want your small moving average for example 50 sma to be above a larger moving average for example 100 sma okay you want your 50 to be above to be above 100 okay and then for a downtrend you want a small ma to be below your large ma 100 sma to be on top then you want your 50 sma to be below so like i said there are two main strategies for moving averages the first one is crossover so right here i have the 50 sma over here then followed by the yellow one which is your 100 sma okay so when the 50 sma is above 100 sma you can see that high chance the price is going to go in a bullish trend so once you've determined that okay this is a bullish trend then you want to wait for price to come down and then test the 50 or 100 sma so the first criteria you want to have a good crossover what do i mean by good crossover aside from the fact that the small moving average has to be above the large moving average the larger the gap in between the two moving averages the stronger is the trend okay so once you see this crossover then you want to wait for price to retrace okay you want to wait for price to retrace and then test the 50 sma or 100 sma and very often time you find that okay price would tend to test the smaller moving averages as compared to 100 SMA. So, so if you use 100 SMA with 200 SMA, the price is going to test 100 SMA more often than it tests 200 SMA. So if you are using 100 with 200, you might want to wait for entry when it tests 100 SMA. Now this for bullish trend, when it comes to bearish trend, I changed the color a little bit so I'm just going to label it for you so that's not too confusing. The white one is your 100 SMA, then the yellow line is your 50 SMA okay so in a good downtrend you want the 50 SMA to be below 100 SMA okay that's the first criteria crossover then of course the larger the gap the better it is second criteria again you want to wait for retracement back up to the moving average so in this case it went back up and test 100 SMA before it retraced and over here it went out and test 50 SMA before it retraced now the key thing is where do you put your stop loss you put your stop loss at the slower moving average always and in this case it is the 100 sma okay if you enter at the 50 sma then you put your stop loss at where the 100 sma is if you use 100 and 200 sma then you put your stop loss at where the 200 sma is so you realize that when the two moving averages start to converge over here okay start to converge over here then you better get out so in a way you can use crossovers as a take profit strategy and a lot of stock investors they do this when there's a moving average crossover they are going to take profit when they are holding their stock long term they are going to take profit okay then the second skill that you should learn is learn how to read 
overbought and oversold levels. We are learn how to use momentum indicators. Now there are three main momentum indicators that people use RSI, Stochastics and also MACD. So because MACD is a little bit more complex, I'm not gonna cover it too much. I'm just gonna cover on Stochastics and then RSI and also CCI. When it comes to stochastics, RSI, CCI, they have some things in common, okay? The values might be a bit different, but the principles are about the same. Normally, they are at the bottom of your chart, so you will see two lines over here. The, so this area over here, okay, is your overbought level. This level over here at the bottom is your oversold level. Just understand this for now. And in the middle over here, from here to here, this is the neutral level. Overbought at the top, oversold at the bottom. So some pointers to take note. Again, you don't just trade based on oversold and overbought. Doesn't mean that if it is oversold, then you need to buy. Doesn't mean that if it is overbought, then you need to sell. Because you know why? Price can remain at those levels for a long time. When you see a stock or currency pair being oversold, it can still continue to go down and down and down. And then you get stopped out again and again and again. But basically, in an uptrend, assuming that you are trading along with the trend, you're gonna ignore overbought signals. And if you are trading a downtrend, you're gonna ignore oversold signals because in an uptrend, you're gonna see a lot of overbought signals. In a downtrend, you're gonna see a lot of oversold signals, which means that very likely those signals are going to be false signals. So in an uptrend, you want to enter when it goes to oversold, potentially enter. And in a downtrend, you want to potentially enter when it goes to an overbought level. There are a lot of momentum indicators, RSI, MACD, CCI, stochastics, but just pick one, okay? Just pick one. At most, you can use two, but anything more than that, I feel that it's redundant because most of the time, these indicators just give you the same signals. So if I pick RSI, for example, and now let's apply whatever that you've learned so far, your trend line, your moving average. Again, this white line is your 100 SMA. You can see right here, there's a confluence, okay, where the price has the trend line. At the same time, it tests moving average. And at the same time, it gives you a bearish candlestick signal. So this is what I call a high probability trade. Of course, you can see that there's a little bit of false breakout over here, okay. Now, how do you spot false breakouts? There are many ways that you can spot false breakouts. The first one is a time filter. Second one is a candlestick filter. For example, if you see a breakout like this over here, and it breaks out on a bearish candlestick pattern. And in this case, this is a bearish army pattern. This tell you that, okay, high chance, this is a false breakout. And the other thing is that when a false breakout occurs, it wouldn't last very long. Probably last, okay, a few candles, then it goes back down. If it breaks above the trend line, okay, and there are a lot of candles, it lasts for more than two days. You can say that this is not really a false breakout. This is the end of the trend. So I'm not gonna digress too much, but you can see that the first confirmation First confirmation is that it tests the trend line. Okay, second confirmation is that it tests the 100 moving average. Third confirmation it gives you a bearish candlestick kind of signal. And the fourth confirmation, you realize that RSI went from overbought and then back to the neutral level. Which so basically, you have four confirmations that the price is going to continue to go down from this point onwards. Okay. Then the question is, can you add more confirmation? Yes, you can, if you want to. If you look at CCI, Stochastics, most of the time it's gonna give you the same signal, okay? See, when CCI goes to overbought, Stochastics also went to overbought. Again over here, overbought, overbought, oversold here, and oversold here. Of course, CCI gave you a little bit earlier, the signal. Oversold here, oversold here on and so forth you can see the same thing it doesn't happen all the time i realize that this is a downtrend okay whenever cci stochastics go to overbought okay you see price went down from here a little bit again cci gives you overbought signal over here price went down from here ranges a little bit go down from there but if you look at oversold signals okay for example here okay oversold signal here. The price didn't really go up that much. In fact, it ranges sideways, then it go down. Okay guys, the next skill you're gonna learn is learn how to spot trend reversals. To learn how to spot trend reversals, you need to use your momentum indicators. You can also use your trend lines, okay? Downtrend, the price is making lower highs. But if you look at your stochastics, your momentum indicator, the price is making 
higher lows, higher lows, and this is what we call a positive divergence. A positive divergence basically when your momentum indicator is sloping upwards. Okay, so this for a downtrend. For an uptrend, you can use RSI as well. And if you put your trend line, you can see that price is making higher lows. Okay, higher lows. Almost at the end of the trend, RSI is making lower highs. Okay, lower highs. Divergence can also have false signals. So you want to wait for a break in a trend line for you to confirm that the bullish trend has ended. Add that with moving average crossovers. Add that with price action confirmation. And also if you learn to read chart patterns, you realize that this here is a head and shoulder pattern over here. This is the head, this is the left shoulder, then this is the right shoulder. And then you have your neckline over here. So when the price broke this neckline and break the major trend line, this is another confirmation that the bullish trend is going to end, okay? Now some points to take notes, when there's a positive divergence, the bearish trend is going to end, so price is going to go from downtrend to uptrend. When there's a negative divergence, it tells you that a bullish trend is going to end, price is going to go from uptrend to downtrend. Now when it comes to divergence indicators, if you're a conservative trader, you can use this as a take profit or scale out strategy. If you're an aggressive trader, you're an experienced trader, then you can use it as an entry on the trend reversal. This means that you're like Paul Tudor Jones, you can pick tops and bottoms. So the next technical analysis skill you got to learn is learn how to find areas of support and resistance. So you can see an uptrend over here, price is above 100 SMA. I drew a support zone over here, okay? Support zone based on the price here, and here, and here. So on the third test over here, you see a confluence confluence where the price tests 100 SMA and at the same time it tests your support zone so you can see that this is a potential entry point provided that you have a good price action signal right after it tests the fourth time price broke below the support zone and it went below 100 SMA so the bullish trend ended again you see a head and shoulder pattern this is a left shoulder this is the head this is the right shoulder of course it made another right shoulder so this is the bullish trend, and when it comes to a bearish market, you should draw a resistance zone. Okay, resistance zone. Again, you can use support resistance to enter a trade, to get out of a trade. So for example, when price comes up here and tests the resistance zone, you can make a sell trade. If you are a day trader, that will be useful for you. But if you are a long-term trend follower, you are riding this whole entire trend. When price broke above, this resistance zone, you gotta get out, okay? You gotta take your profits. So it depends on what kind of trader you are. You can use it as a take profit strategy or you can use it like as a entry strategy. Again, if you look at the chart properly, you see that there's an inverse head and shoulder pattern. Now if you use support resistance, couple of points to take note. It's not a straight line, it should be drawn as a zone. And what makes a strong support resistance? When the price has your SNR at least three times, but not too many times. And if it takes a long time to form, very similar to trend line, okay? And if you see it in a higher time frame, the principle is pretty much similar to a trend line. And you can use it as a stop loss level, you can also use it as a take profit level, and you can also use it to enter on a bounce off. So the fifth skill you should learn, I would say this one of the most important ones because price is king. So you're gonna time your trades using price action. So you see a resistance line over here, okay? And price came out to test the third time. Obviously this is a false breakout and it gives you a bearish candlestick signal. So you can see that this is a bearish engulfing pattern but it's not super ideal because I would prefer that this bullish candlestick be a bit smaller. And in a downtrend like this, you realize that my 100 SMA is here, 50 SMA is here. You can use price section to confirm a reversal. So you can see that just before the downtrend ends, okay, you have a bullish army pattern. Also at the same time, you see that when price test trend line, okay, it gives you a bearish signal. This is when you can enter if you're a day trader, swing trader. So realize that you can use candlesticks for many different purposes. You can use it to take profit. For example, when you see a very strong bullish signal, you can TP when this candle form, okay? Not all candlestick signals will work out because if it appears 
at the wrong time, at the wrong place, it will not work out. Basically, context is key. Actually, you don't really need to memorize the names because you just need to understand the psychology behind it. Okay, psychology behind it. And also, just take note of where it appears. Does it apply in this context? That's all you need to know. Don't need to know the name, it's just a bonus. So, what makes a candlestick signal really strong? Like I said, if it appears at the right place at key critical levels, for example, if it tests a support resistance, if it tests a trend line, if it tests a fee ball level. Now, for some candlestick signals, the larger the size of the body, the stronger it is. But for some candlestick signals, the smaller the body, the stronger it is. Then for some candlestick signals, the longer the shadow, the better it is. Then for some, the shorter the shadow, the better it is. So it depends on the pattern. What I'm telling you is that you gotta take note of the size, the body, and the shadow. Color, I would say it depends, but it's not as important as the body size and also the shadow length. So basically, how do you understand the psychology behind candlesticks? So if I show you these two candlestick pattern, okay? You see that price open over here? During this time frame, sellers push the price all the way down. And it seems like that, okay, the sellers are winning, the bears are coming in, but then almost at the end of the time frame, the buyers start to come in and then push the price up, all the way up, and then it closes at this level. So who do you think won? If I give you some context, at the initial part of the buying and selling, it is mostly retail and mature traders. But at the end of the buying and selling, at the end of the period, the buying and selling is dominated by professional traders. So at the end of the session, the pros push the price up. So who do you think won? Buyers or sellers? Buyers. Where do you think the price would go next? High chance, if you see this in a downtrend, at the end of the downtrend, be prepared for price to go up. But of course, if this pattern appears at the end of an uptrend, the price might actually go down because you know why? The fact that sellers push the price down, all the way down here, tells you that, okay, there is some sellers that came in. But personally, I would say that this is a stronger bullish pattern than a bearish pattern, okay? Especially when it's green color. Okay. Now for this candle, okay, price open here, and then close here, and then buyers push the price all the way up, okay? And it seems like that buyers are winning. And then later on, the sellers start to come in, push the price all the way down. At the end of the session, who won the game? The sellers. If you see this at the end of an uptrend, this tells you that uh, the bullish trend might end. If you see this at the end of a downtrend, it tells you that, okay, buyers might start to come in and then push the price up because the fact that the price went all the way up here, it tells you that, okay, maybe buyers, they're starting to come in. You know what I'm saying? Context is very important. But again, I would say that this is more of a stronger bearish pattern than a bullish pattern. Okay, I'll give you some examples. Let's combine everything together. First thing first, our 100 SMA here. The first thing is to look at the moving averages. Okay, that's the first step. 50 SMA. Alright, now it's a bearish trend. 50 SMA is below 100 SMA. Okay, first criteria fulfilled. Good to go, bearish trend. Second criteria, is there any confluence? So you can see price came up here, test this trend line. And the 50 SMA at the same time. Alright. Plus, there's a bearish army cross over here. I don't know if you can see it. Stochastics also went to overbought. So this third confirmation. Okay. So you can look for potential entry over here, right? And then you can put your stop above the slower moving average, which is 100 SMA. Then you can take your profit at the recent swing low. Or if you are trend follower, you can write the trend longer, add fundamentals to it, add sentiment analysis to it. Then you can write the trend longer, okay? So the trend went from bearish and then to bullish. Okay, so let's find some confirmations for reversals. First confirmation, you see an inverted head and shoulder over here, right shoulder over here, then the head over here. If you draw the neckline, it goes like this, okay? First confirmation, you have your chart pattern reversal. Second confirmation, you see that price broke above this major trend line. Third confirmation, you see that the price make a 90 degree drop. When the price does this kind of thing, a 90 degree drop or near 90 degree drop, it tells you that the trend is about to end. About to end, not guaranteed, but about to end. Fourth confirmation, you see 50 SMA cross above 
hundred SMA. That is your fourth confirmation. And also you realize that price came up here and also came back down, test this trend line. This trend line was initially a resistance, then it became support. When it tested the trend line as a support, it gave you a bullish signal over here. So based on candlestick signal, this is your fifth confirmation. Okay, I know it's a bit messy, but if you want to replay this video, feel free to do that. When it forms the head, it also went to oversold. So this is the sixth confirmation, it went to oversold. And if you look properly, look properly, there's a little bit of positive divergence over here. That's the seventh confirmation. Right? Now the thing about stochastics is that just like RSI, you can draw a trend line to it. You can draw a line like this. Like a trend line. So stochastics broke above the stochastic trend line. So this is eight confirmation. How many more confirmations do you need? Okay, let's find one more. Ninth confirmation. If you know how to read stochastics, the white line cross above yellow line. White line is your fast stochastics. Yellow line is your slow stochastics. So when the white line cross above the yellow line, it gives you a potential bullish signal. Okay, so you can say that is the ninth confirmation. Ten confirmation. Let's find ten confirmation. Do you remember our neckline, heads and shoulder neckline? When the price broke our neckline right here. It came back down and test the neckline one more time and give you a bullish candlestick signal. So maybe if you are conservative, you can enter here after the 10 confirmation. When you enter after all these freaking 10 confirmations, you still have a good trend to write. You want more confirmations at your fundamentals. You want more confirmations at sentiments. Okay, I'm done with this. But I know to be honest guys, 4 to 5 confirmations is enough. I'm just being crazy over here. Okay, let's go to another example. Let's find a good entry point, okay? First thing first, again, moving average. It's our 50 above 100. I'll say this one's a little bit more tricky. We look at third test, which is right here. Second confirmation, there's a confluence where the price tested our trend line and also our moving average. In fact, test 50 SMA and 100 SMA at the same time. Okay, it tests both moving average at the same time. It also tests trend line at the same time. So that's the second confirmation. Then the third confirmation, you realize that there's a bullish candlestick signal right here. It's not ideal, but it is a bullish candlestick signal. Okay, it's on candlestick signal. That's the third confirmation. Alright, we look below. Okay, look at our momentum indicator RSI. Remember in an uptrend, we want to look for oversold levels. Okay, so you have your fourth confirmation right here. Don't need to go crazy like just now. Even though it's not 100% ideal, because you know why? Your 50 SMA is kind of below your 100 SMA. I would say it's not ideal, but the good thing about this is that the gap is very small. So because moving average is a lagging indicator, so it's going to cross a little bit later. Understand that technical analysis is a risk management tool, not a predictive tool. And also, you got to use a combination of lagging and leading indicators. And also, don't use too many indicators. Just pick one from each category. One from momentum indicator, one from volatility indicator, one from trend indicator or two. At the end of the day, understand that the most important data is still the price, price section. So make sure you learn it properly. And also, aside from learning entry signals, you also need to learn entry signals because, for example, if you trade breakouts a lot, you not only need to know when should you enter a breakout, but you also need to learn how to spot false breakouts, how to spot false signals. You gotta learn your entry signals and also at the same time, learn your false signals. So that you know when you see it. Basically, the best way to master technical analysis is to trade using it, not to read about it. To read about it, not to sing about it, not to listen about it. And also to make my effort worth it, subscribe to my channel. Because there are people who tell me, Karen, I've earned $45,000, $40,000. I become profitable just from watching your free videos. I never pay you a single cent. There are even people, guys, who tell me, Karen, I bought a freaking car from watching your YouTube channel, I never pay you a single cent. And I'm like, I'm happy for you, bro. Sis, free resources, unfortunately, a lot of people, they don't take advantage of it. Sometimes the free things are the things you need to help you take your career, take your business to the next level. You know what I'm saying? Even though it's free, okay, I can easily charge for it, but this one, I just give you for free. 
So guys, if you want to learn more about candlesticks, about the different indicators you can use, I'm gonna put it right up here, somewhere up here. Okay, so you can check it out. I'll talk to you in the next course video. Bye.